upang magbigay ng pasasalamat, narito ang direktor ng UP Press, Dr. Jose Neil C. Garcia. The promotion of literacy is a cause in which the entirety of our national educational system is of necessity urgently invested. After all, we have only been unevenly and in many places minimally literate for a tumultuous century. It's easy to see how the residual orality that afflicts our personal lives as well as our social and political systems is in many ways the uneasy endowment of this cultural condition. It is only with a firmly established textual mentality that many of our enduring problems as a country can begin to be addressed. For their solutions all presuppose in its citizens primarily the ability, actually the habit, to think in categorical rather than provisional terms. If only for this reason, the cultivation of literacy through the sponsorship of the arts may be seen as a uniquely nationalistic undertaking. It builds the Filipino nation as a matter of collective inclination and awareness, as an imaginative and ethical inner structure first and foremost. The University of the Philippines Press certainly plays a crucial role in this immense and unfinished task. In pursuing its mandate to advocate academic freedom, it presents and disseminates local and important forms of knowledge by publishing the very best literary and scholarly books by our country's very best writers and scholars. Because the arts are an exemplary form of heightened consciousness, they may be said to be the condition for and evidence of a mature and transformative literacy of the visual, performative, and literary sorts. Hence, their continued production and distribution through the medium of books can only be in the interest of our country's one and only national university to carry out. We need to realize that the powerful orality that continues to permeate our lives is a cultural mode characterized by a fluid and variable memory. While copious and valuable in its own tactile and immediate ways, the oral mind with its makeshift and situational predisposition has prevented us from remembering analytically and tenaciously about things. Sadly, this is precisely the kind of cognitive skill that we need in order to set aright so much of what is wrong about our national reality blighted as it is by exactly the kinds of clientelist ties premised on personalistic logic that orality propagates and requires. UP must continue to champion profound forms of reading and writing, not only because textual or categorical mentality is something our country vitally needs, but also because it is especially through these mindful acts that an ethical intuition can take root. Literacy, literacy suspends us inside the consciousness of others, rendering us responsible for our ways of relating with them, who affirm our sense of self precisely by being irreducible to it, and with whom we must share this imperiled and perilous world. Immersing themselves in the complexities of their formal practices, artists leave behind the safety of the familiar, the known and the same, in order to confront, respect, and relate to strangeness, difference, otherness. It is through the arts and their imaginative flights, their ability to endow us a point of view distinct from our own, to incarnate us, as it were, that we bring our sense of identity, our very self, to a state of beautiful crisis from which we may emerge not only more aware and appreciative of the existence of others, but also, more importantly, as fundamentally different from or other to ourselves. 
from this recontextualizing of the self, its decentering and empathy across embodiments and locations, a sense of morality may gradually, hopefully, emerge. The UP Press is half a century old. It is only fitting that it should celebrate and share this milestone with its authors. Early last year, we decided to honor and express our gratitude to the 13 national artists who have entrusted to their books to our care. Consummate rememberers and translators between the oral and textual realms. They stand as the vanguards of our people's steadfast march toward the kind of profound and moral literacy underlying the grand and aspirational abstraction that is the nation. And so we are duly reminded, before it can be anything else, the Filipino nation must be a stable allegory, a powerfully enacted story with its set of rituals and cosmologizing symbols that can gather together the embodied and parlous differences of our country into the archipelagic unity that lies at the heart of our imagined community. Of course, it is our artists who bridge the chasm between our present and our past in order to provide us the brightest rituals, symbols, images, sounds, and narratives that collectively inspire and perform into being our national culture. In the words of Franz Fanon, and let me quote, a national culture is the whole body of efforts made by a people in the sphere of thought to describe, justify, and praise the action through which that people has created itself and keeps itself in existence." Unquote. On behalf of the University of the Philippines, I would like to thank all our national artists, authors, for entrusting to us, UP's official publishing house, their wondrous and irreplaceable books the children of their best selves, bestowals of their giving consciousness. As carefully shaped, shaped vessels of enduring memory, books are nothing if not invitations to the ethical life, gestures towards principled sociality, manifestos against the shame and impunity of forgetting. Our country, as bodied forth by its one and only national university, shall forever be grateful to all of you. I would also like to thank our partner institutions for this tribute program, namely the College of Arts and Letters, headed by Dean Amihan Bonifacio Ramolete, and the UP Open University, headed by Chancellor Grace Alfonso. Our heartfelt thanks also goes to the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, the Cultural Center of the Philippines, and the Likaan UP Institute of Creative Writing, as well as all the speakers, resource persons, performers, MCs, visual and musical artists, and members of, it, of the production staff who all work tirelessly in the making of our tribute videos and installations, as well as our activity here today. I would like in particular to thank Ms. Olive Nieto, <laughs> Special Project Coordinator of the UP Press, she and her team that includes Alden Acosta, Angela Simbahon and Opaline Santos, team marketing and editorial and admin of the UP Press, all of them have been unstinting and entirely committed to all our golden anniversary activities, especially today's. Finally, I wish to thank the administration of President Alfredo E. Pascual, especially my lovely and indefatigable boss, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Giselle Padilla Concepcion, for their unwavering support of all the projects and initiatives of the UP Press. Thank you for coming. A pleasant evening to one and all. Thank you, UP Press Director, Sir Jose Neil C. Garcia. Inaanyayahan po namin ang lahat na magsitayo para sa UP naming mahal. <laughs>